Hey, good morning. This is Paul from Hot and Humid Hydroponics. Uh, today is November 11th. Uh, in the U.S., it is Veterans Day. So before I go into anything about the plants, I just want to first and foremost say thank you for all of our U.S. veterans out there, um, all those who have served, all those who um, unfortunately never make it, made it back. Um, I wouldn't have the freedom to do what I'm doing right now in my own backyard without their sacrifice and their time put in. I just want to thank them and give them the respect that they deserve first and foremost. So today, really quick, I just want to do a super quick update to let everybody know what I'm doing. So as much as I love to make these videos for everybody and kind of just, I don't know, I don't want to use the word brag about my accomplishments because it's not to me I'm not trying to brag I really just want to show people that they can get out there and do things and it's something they can accomplish and success is there if you if you're being persistent and that's that's really my intention here so if you see a lot of videos of my tomato plants it's not as much as me saying oh look my tomato plants as it is hey I want to encourage each and every one of you guys to get out there and make it happen for you for whatever your reasons are. Some people say I want to have food control. Some people say I just want to do it because I like to garden. I want to try something different. Sometimes it's for economics, you know. Um, they're afraid the prices of food are going to go up. Whatever your reason is. In my case, my reason is, is that I'd like to get good enough of this so I can offset my food costs that I know that are rising because I have beautiful twin baby boys, a wonderful wife, and I have a four-year-old boy as well who's growing and eating like a teenager all, all of a sudden. So, you know, um, as far as for, you know, some would say, well, what are you going to do with all these tomatoes? Well, the thing is, is that I only have a little bit of space here. Literally, that's a 30-foot fence. That's probably another 30 feet between my air conditioning unit and that fence. There's my house. There's the beginning of my unit. The end of my screen and porch. Guys, I'm really not sitting on a ton of land. So I'm making a decision to grow things that ultimately cost me the most money during the year. And the products that I like to buy. Number one, I like spaghetti sauce. But more than I like spaghetti sauce, I actually like chips and salsa. You know, as far as uh, you know, salsa to put on everything. Um, and I like fresh tomatoes with my salad and I want to eat more salads. So the problem always is, is that when I'm in the mood for a salad, you know, you got to go to the store because we don't buy lettuce in advance because we don't go through enough of it. It's more of a cult. It's more of a eating culture thing with my wife, uh, my family and I were trying to get into, but because it's not there, we don't. And because with all the craziness going on in, out there, going to the store strictly for lettuce and tomatoes, eh, a little bit kind of, uh, a little difficult. So I figured, hey, why not grow them here? They'll be fresh. They'll be uh, grown to or organic standards. Let me stop here for a moment before anybody jumps my case. No, I cannot claim that hydroponics is organic. Technically, no one can, but let's face it, the majority of people define organic as, I'm not spraying my tomato plants with a bunch of lethal crap. And, that's what I'm not doing. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at here is someone who hasn't even sprayed, and I should have already, but I'm going to be doing it because it's been raining the past couple of days. I haven't even really sprayed any type of antifungal or anything on these plants this season. Um, the only thing that's ever hit these was by recommendation of uh, Rick Breckenridge out of Wormsway and also Aubrey uh, Hanford uh, from Second Harvest Hydro, uh, Second, Second Sun Hydroponics. I'm sorry. They both recommend Azadiract and Azimax. And I tried that and I did that for my seedlings for the first three to four weeks. You put it more or less, you wait for the second set of leaves to come on of your seedlings. And then you go ahead and spray them down with this fairly expensive stuff. It's like 20 bucks for eight ounces. It's not, it's, but it makes it concentrate, but still it's very expensive. 
And the first thing everybody says, whoa, how in the world did you make it go that far to spread all over those plants? The reality is, is that it gets spread on when they're seedlings. It's an inoculant. It's a systemic, meaning it gets into the plant itself, and it stays there for pretty much the full life. Now, if I got a bad infestation, a white fly or something like that, it came out here, I would probably make a full one gallon batch and I would hose down these plants at least once or twice and that should take care of it. But the thing is, is that when the white flies or the thrips or the spider mites decide to bite on this plant, it immediately puts the brakes on them, stops the reproductive cycle, um, stops the pupa, it does a lot of different things. Also viruses and things like that that come from those plants um, it comes up and down it, it stops it inside from the inside so what is azadiractin made from azadiractin is actually uh, omri compliant so it's organic compliant and it's made from neem seeds now, now don't get confused with neem oil okay i have pros and cons on neem oil i know a lot of people love to use it matter of fact a lot of people like to overuse it for just about every situation and that becomes a problem um, azadiractin is more of a lighter liquid versus an oil. Every time I've ever used neem, neem oil, I've effectively burnt my plants. I can't get around it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I've used very little and I've burnt my plants. Yes, I do them in the evening. I've done them in the evening with a couple of days lined up of just cloudiness. I've done everything I possibly can to mitigate burning, but every time I use neem oil, I burn my plants. Neem oil also, and this is subjective, um, has been known to possibly disrupt after some research and talking with uh, one of my uh, counterparts at Hot and Human Hydroponics. Neem oil is a broad spectrum based uh, insecticide, meaning it, it, it can kill everything, including bees. And so, uh, and, you know, after starting to learn in gardening, I've had a deeper appreciation for the hard work that our bees do, both our solitary and our honeybees. And I don't want anything to affect them. So back to azadiractin. Azadiractin is a seed extract. And as an, an inoculant, it gets into the system. And therefore, it puts the brakes on things before they happen. So an ounce of prevention goes a long way. And that literally is an expensive ounce of prevention. But I can't beat the results. Guys, I had powdery mildew. I had white fly. I had all kinds of problems last season that I was constantly battling. Um, I don't have this issue whatsoever. These guys were grown from seeds starting in August, went through probably around mid-September I planted them. They went through very hot and humid environments, no pun intended. And um, aside from this one leaf here they got chewed on, um, every other leaf on these plants, and I've got a couple of them here, are just in excellent shape. Really, it's just, it's, it's outstanding. And I'm ultra excited about a lot of these plants because some of these tomatoes as i've said before in my previous videos are from clee uh, the clee lab out of u of f i'm sorry university of florida and uh, you can't get these seeds out on the market you have to make a small nice little donation to them call uh, to garden gem tomatoes and that's what i have i have the garden gem and i have their garden treasure variety in these buckets right here up to about i think right about here and then I've got some Sun Chocola from Territorial Seeds. Those are going to be like a black cherry tomato. And I got a couple of San Marzanos. And I, you know what? I'm not sure which these two guys are because I just planted them from, uh, from a couple of them that broke off of these guys and ended up sticking them in the hydroponic solution. They've done fantastic. So, you know, a couple of oddballs. We'll find out what they are when they finally start producing. Anyways, I'm really excited because out of all these plants although they are there's a lot of different ones here they're all having one thing in common that thing in common is is that they are indeed thriving unlike last year they were surviving it's two totally different concepts when you're gardening is that what are you going to get i've got a yield that's going to come in here that's going to be bonkers so long as everything stays straight so anyways i just wanted to share this quick little video um about what i'm doing what i'm using also major major difference from last year to this year is that i'm using um potassium silicate so i didn't know about potassium silicate until after the end of my first season now when i say first season i live in tampa florida i get two seasons i get my spring i get my spring to summer season and then summer and all hell burns over and you know you stay inside and you drink 
sweet tea and lemonade and you wait for it to come over and then you get your fall season which is very much like your spring season except it comes with a frost sometime in February. Plenty of time to grow pretty much everything you grew in spring for up in Northern America down here with a few exceptions. So you can pretty much grow tomatoes. You just have to be prepared that if there is a light frost you have to have covering. Um, I'm gonna be putting some six mil over these chained up with a bunch of Christmas lights so that I can provide a little bit of heat but ultimately, um, and if that were to happen, but I'm getting those preparations now just in case it were to spring up on us. So anyway, so yeah, back to uh, potassium silicate. Um, potassium silicate is an amazing little product. Um, it's kind of hard to find. I mean, you can get it, but you get it's hard to find in bulk. And ultimately, it, uh, it, it creates a better solution. The water makes the water wetter. It's the best way I can explain it. And it also makes the travel from the... Uh, from the reservoir up and down the plant so it actually helps with water and nutrient transport which just obviously means bigger and stronger growth the one thing I've noticed this year versus last season is that uh, my stems are ultra thick they're probably about you know they're they're twice as thick as they were last year um, I'm trellising them but I probably wouldn't have to if they were you know I could cage them but some need to be trellised some don't but they're they stood up fine for the longest time whereas immediately as soon as some top weight was put on my seeds last year i um, mean my plants last year they just needed um immediate uh, trellising they needed immediate support so anyways just wanted to kind of ch share with you those are the really two big things so master blend international is this fertilizer i'm using uh, during the hot months, like right now, up until just recently, I've been running probably around 900 parts per million. Now that I'm starting to get some cooler temperatures, 80 and below, I know it sounds not so cool, but it's cooler to us. Um, I will be cranking that up probably in the mid-2000s now that these bad boys are starting to feed a little heavier. And, and they are, they're sucking down nutrient and my PPMs are going uh, down lower. Also, my PPM equals EC, um, and meaning that when the nutrients are getting eating at a pretty consistent rate. I'm losing about two gallons a day, which is good. It's a good thing. It's all going into the plants. So uh, if you put two, um, although my plants, if they, let's say these plants were just the same, this big, and it was 85 degrees outside right now, the problem you would run into, and I ran into this because I did kind of wilt my plants one, one Saturday, is that if your reservoir has too high of a concentration of nutrients and they're drinking more water than they're eating, the concentration level of nutrients inside that reservoir is going to go up naturally and the pH is going to fluctuate because again they're only going to eat so much but they're going to drink a whole lot more but indeed when the cycle goes on and the timers go on and you have an immediate spike in pH and certain minerals are out of whack you start to get stress on the plants so I've learned my lesson that when it's during the hot months go ahead and use 800 to 900 maybe 1100 parts per million uh, when it comes to your nutrient solution and guess what they're going to drink and eat just as much as if it was higher now now that it's getting cooler to get that same effect i'm going to start dialing up my nutrient solution also they're flowering they're still growing they're probably going to get double this size in the next couple of months that's the things i'm most concerned about is that i don't want to leave myself with not enough fruit so other than that, everything else looks really great. Hey, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the bottom here to go ahead and join the Hot and Humid Hydroponics page. I want to encourage everybody to kind of join because if you have questions or if you want to build your system or if you have some ideas, we want to encourage you to go ahead and, and, and execute those ideas, but we're going to give you the tools and the lessons that we've learned already. So um, as elaborate as this setup is right here, you do not have to do this to be successful at home. There's a, like a number of ways, and I've got counterparts in my pay, on this page right now that uh, have done pretty much the same results using aquaponics, or they will use uh, nutrient film techniques. Um, a couple other people you do very, very well with this new system. Well, this is probably one of the older hydroponic systems out there. These are uh, stackables. I just got these used from a commercial grower, and those will be going in right in this little spot here, giving me about 140 spaces. But you can grow tomatoes in that. You just got to do them a certain way. And um, I've seen them at many like, commercial grow locations that have uh, these tomatoes, monster tomatoes, great opportunity, uh, and very little space. So... 
Anyways, again, thank you so much from Hot and Humid Hydroponics. Have a wonderful Veterans Day, and thank you for allowing me to, to encourage you and speak into your lives. Have a great day. Bye-bye.